Hey guys, Dave Ray here from DB Restorations. How you doing today? Hopefully good. I'm working on this really cool little 68 Dodge Charger. Kind of pan back here so you can kind of see it. Now this thing's pretty rough looking from the outside, but uh, the owner has been doing some work on it and he sent it to me uh, mainly just to put new floors in it, new trunk pan, and uh, four-wheel power disc brakes on it for him so he can drive it and be safe. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of money to restore the car, to do a complete restoration on it, which a lot of people don't. So he wants to drive it like a rat rod. So he's leaving it basically looking exactly the way it looks right now. I know there's going to be a lot of haters out there going, man, you're just ruining this car, you know, but it's a really cool 68 Charger. It's got a lot of rust. It's got a lot of rust up here. You can see around the package tray, all around the back window and everything. But believe it or not, the frame rails are extremely solid. You can see here I put all new pans in it. And uh, I coated all his frame rails with uh, Pour 15 on the inside before I did that. Prepped everything. And so he's got a really nice solid car now. And the trunk, I can kind of see in there. I put all new trunk pan, new trunk extensions. So you can see he's still got rust. In the quarter panels but everything you know lower parts of the quarter but everything inside is is really solid but he just wants it to be safe to drive and he's just going to drive it so i mean good for him the, the car's on the road and if you know i can help him out and and let him uh, have some fun and enjoy it you know that's you know more power to him but anyway you know i was going to kind of go over uh some of the system here but i did a four-wheel power disc brake setup this car already had power brakes on it but it was power drum all the way around but you can see uh, I got a brand new master cylinder power brake booster with the kit. Just got all that installed. And down here, uh, you can see I got our front disc brakes and everything all installed. So this is a cool kit. Came with new spindles, calipers, rotors, all new bearings and everything. So, I mean, that's, you know, all you basically need. And, you know, of course, uh, new brake lines. So now I'm working on the rear kit. And I'll show you here. I kind of pan back here and kind of show you what I got here, but this is the kit I got from Classic Industries. And it all came in a kit, front and rear with the power disc brake booster and everything else. So I'm gonna work on the rear brakes. And I had a lot of you guys question me about the front brakes saying, hey, how hard are they to put on? Well, the fronts are really easy to do. The rears are a little more difficult. So I thought I'd videotape them for you and show you. So I'm gonna do two parts. I'll do part one right now. And it'll have all the way up until where I'm pressing the bearings on the axles. And then I'll come back and do a part two uh, a few weeks later and get you guys uh, that video as well. So here's our, our parts list here for the rear. You know, of course, we've got our rotors, got our calipers. And this particular unit, the caliper uh, parking brake is set up on a spring, which compresses the brake pads uh, to lock your rotor. Some actually have like a brake drum. Willwood is known for that on the inside of the rotor and so it would have like little brake shoes on the outside of the caliper uh, that would actuate your parking brake but this one is all in one unit and operates off of the piston so these are single piston setup unlike our CUDA over there which I put a four piston wheelwood setup in it but this is a very affordable kit comes with all the hardware all the brackets everything you need the only thing I had to buy was these green bearings now you hear a lot of people talk about these green bearings and I'll show you what they are. They are the same style. And whenever I get the rear axle out on the car, I will, I will show you a little more in detail. But these green bearings are a one-piece bearing. There's no race. They have an O-ring on them to seal. So I'll show you. And it's got the keeper and everything on there and the flange. But I will show you when we get to that part. But you, you, know, you need to install green bearings on these rear, brake, rear disc brake setups. Because if you don't, the axle seals are going to leak. So you can't put those factory adjustable style bearings in there. But uh, this came with the parking brake cables, of course, brake lines, calipers, brackets, and the rotors. So let's dig into this thing, all right? So I assume you guys all know how to take off a wheel. So I don't need to get into that. So let's get that baby there out of the way. So basically, here's our brake drum. So now we got to get our brake drum off. Sometimes these could be very difficult to remove, so make sure you got ear protection on. Because when you start banging on this drum with a hammer, you got some uh, hearing loss going on, I guarantee you. So, 
kind of tap it, wiggle it back and forth. I'm doing this on my own, so just kind of walk it out of there. This car's been sitting for a long time, so obviously the brake shoes were all stuck in there and everything else. So it'll take a little bit of doing, but we will get it off. All right, so there you go. Brake drum is off. Not as bad as I thought. I thought it would be completely trash. So what you need to do now is basically take all your brake shoes off and strip it all the way down to the backing plate. So what you're going to do is undo your upper springs right here and undo those. If you don't have a spring tool, you can use a screwdriver. I have a spring tool. These things work great. And then you want to use this tool right here, which is this little keeper tool. And you'll stick that on there and undo those and drop your shoes off and strip this all the way down to the backing plate. So we're going to do that right now. Okay, top springs are off and the keeper right there. Make sure you are wearing eye protection. Don't forget eye protection anytime you're working with a car. You should always have eye protection on, no matter what you're doing. So you never know when something's going to fly up and get stuck in your eye. Believe me, I've had enough metal stuck in my eye, and that's from wearing eye protection. But it can happen. But yeah, be smart. Wear eye protection, ear protection. All right, so let's get on to these keepers here. And... I'm going to try to do this with one hand while I'm filming. I promise you I'm getting a better camera. Sometimes you got to hold the back to keep that choker from turning. That's not. So hold on a sec, guys. Okay, those are off. Drop this baby down. Drop this baby down. I mean, I'm not being super careful with any of this because we're not keeping any of this stuff, okay? So get all your parts out of there I save them though because I use use uh, different pieces for other brake jobs if I got some that are damaged it's nice to keep nice original parts but in this case you're not using any of this stuff not even the backing plate okay we got all that stripped off of there undid my parking brake cable it's just hanging there I'm gonna leave it in the backing plate but to remove your parking brake cable let me zoom in there there's these little tabs in your backing plate you got to kind of squeeze those tabs and then wiggle it and it will pop out through the back of the backing plate if you want to reuse that don't break them off i'm thinking that we could reuse the original factory uh parking brake lines by looking at the other ones here but i'm going to see uh if it'll work or not so i don't have to you know redo this whole parking brake setup with these little short cables that they gave us in the kit so I'm just going to leave that snapped into the backing plate for right now. So what I'm going to do is come onto the back side here. You can see our brake line there. And I'm going to undo that hard line on the brake line. And uh, either we can start working on getting our backing plate off of there and sliding our axle out. All right. So brake line next. Check. Okay, guys. Uh, brake line's off. You can see it up there. I'll tell you. A lot of guys ask, hey, for rusty bolts and rusty things, what do you recommend? This is all I'll use here, PB Blaster. Stuff's been around forever. I love it. It's always my go-to go -to tool for removing rusty bolts. I just shot it on this brake line to release it because a lot of times these nuts, if they've been sitting for a while, uh, they'll rust onto the tube. And then when you start unloosening that nut, you just twist that tube. And I definitely recommend replacing all of your brake lines. If you don't, make sure you do not connect any of your brake lines up uh, until you get your new master cylinder on there and flush all these brake lines out with all fresh fluid and make sure there's no debris inside your lines uh, if you're going to reuse your old line. So make sure you uh, yeah, clean them all out, run some fresh fluid through them, but I recommend replacing all your brake lines as well. Okay, so brake lines off. Now what we need to do is we're going to go in here. You see this big hole in this axle. This big hole right here allows you to get a socket inside of there. You can see around the nuts here, there's five of these nuts around here, and that's what's holding your axle on there. And the passenger side has the adjuster on it. So, God, this thing's such a mess, man. You can't even see it. So I'm going to have to get it out of there and show you. But one of these nuts will have a little keeper on it. And the little keeper is going to go inside of a little slot. It's kind of hooked like this. And it's going to go inside of a little slot on this big, huge adjusting nut that adjusts the end play on your axle. Because your axle, you want just a little bit of end play. I mean, just a tiny bit that you could just barely feel uh, on the axle. So that's what that adjusting nut's for. It adjusts on your bearing, so it resets the axle into a different location to give you 
just the right amount of end play so you're not putting too much strain on those bearings but also you don't want it too loose into where you got just a sloppy rear end on it so that's what we're going to do right now is we're going to put our socket in there i got a little impact so i just run them in there kind of get her locked on there they're they're 9 16 and you can see that just burns them right off of there so we're going to go on around all of these and pull these five out okay okay guys i forgot to tell you get a drain pan ready because when you take those those nuts off of there and go to pull that axle out some gear oil is going to leak out of there so just put a little little drain pan underneath there to catch any oil seepage but anyway i got a flashlight in there so i'll show you there's that adjuster i was telling you that big nut is right there and the nut on there the only one on there that has this little collar on it on the bottom you can see a standard ones like this you know and then this one right here of course has a collar on it. it's like a built-in washer so that's the one that holds that little tab on there and you can kind of see where it's locked in right there onto one of those teeth so that's the dude See if I can get it out of there. So much grease and muck in there. There you go. That's the dude that holds your adjuster. So there you go. So that's that right there. Okay. So we're going to set that there and let's go ahead and get this axle pulled out. So you just kind of give her a good jerk and off she comes. So as you can see here, here's your bearing assembly right here. And what it has is it's got a race on there. This is the race that I'm spinning. You can just see the needles on the bearing in there. And then, of course, here's your, your lock collar on there. So what we're going to do is, you can see here, try to get where the light's shining. There you go. See that adjusting nut right there? When you spin that, it'll take up the slop on your rear axle in there. But it works off of this flange area right here. So our new bearings are just going to be a one-piece bearing, no race. So it's going to be a sealed bearing that's going to go on there with the lock collar in the same location, but it will not have this adjuster. And it'll still have a flange, but not the adjuster. And it'll go right into the axle tube, and it's got an O-ring on it. So that O-ring will seal it inside the axle tube, and then it's got a snap ring out here where it won't go in too far. So that's what we're going to change over on these. Because right now, if you take all this off of here in your gaskets, it's going to leak if you run a disc brake setup. And then you're going to get oil all over your rotors and your brakes are not going to work. So remember, you got to run green bearings on these. So we're going to get these axle shafts out, pull these backing plates off. And then we're going to get our green bearings pressed on there. And then I'm going to show you the assembly process in part two. So I hope I helped you guys out. You can kind of see if I just wiggle this right now our backing plate is going to come right off of those studs okay and then it comes with all new t-bolts and i'll show you how to install those new t-bolts and everything else on your axle housing now remember this is an eight and three quarter mopar rear end on the 68 dodge charger so i'm not working on a dana 60 this is an eight and three quarter uh, with the third member so i hope this helped you guys out so stay tuned i'll release part two here shortly. Thanks. Take care, you guys. Mopar, no car.